What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. Today, pretty much what we got going on or I guess for the next couple days here, I have my 8x16 enclosed trailer sitting behind me and this trailer uh, this fall was currently used for decoys. This was my decoy trailer and when I bought this thing, I pretty much ripped the inside apart. I insulated the ceiling, uh, paneled the ceiling and insulated all the walls, pretty much insulated the whole trailer and I kind of made it so I could sleep in it. I put a roof vent on the trailer and stuff like that and did a couple little things to make it so I could sleep in it those late nights out in the field but now it is hard winter coming so I had the idea I already insulated it put a vent on it why not throw a heater in it or a furnace and use this thing this winter and get a little bit of use out of it and do some ice fishing out of this trailer but I'm gonna get started cleaning this thing up we're gonna keep all the simple basic stuff short and sweet we're gonna do a little bit of detailed talking and hook up on the furnace that I'm installing in this thing and then we're gonna have a TV in this thing I'm gonna be drilling ice holes in this hooking propane tanks up on the front of the trailer and literally doing everything to turn an uh, enclosed trailer into an ice fishing setup other than cranking the trailer down. So this trailer sits about 14 inches off the ground once it's leveled out and that's how high this trailer will be sitting off the ice. So either I'm gonna do skirts on it or I'm gonna hope there's enough snow to bank this thing in and cover it up when it's on the ice. But uh, yeah, let's get into this video. I'm gonna get this trailer cleaned out. It is disgusting from hunting and then we're gonna start doing stuff. So stay tuned, let's go. The inside of this is absolutely disgusting right now. I got junk everywhere so we're gonna get this thing cleaned out or I am I should say I'm gonna spray this thing out luckily there's water piped up in this garage and I can spray this trailer out and clean it all out and get it nice and kind of clean then we're gonna get into it so stay tuned I'm gonna clean her out we'll get back to you well if you haven't seen anyone uh, foam can in the inside of the trailer I'm about to so uh, here that's about it <laughs> Well, I'm freaking sweating and full of water also, but mostly sweating. Uh, but the trailer looks a little better now. She's a little cleaned out inside. I just got her all dried off in there. Took a couple towels, but she's looking a little better. This guy's an idiot. What do I want to say to the camera? Yeah. I hope you sink it in the lake. That's messed up, dude. All right, so how this propane tank mount comes is with mounting holes right here and I don't know if they make like mounting hardware for it or if it's trailer specific or I don't know what they got going on there but if I put mounting hardware there that's gonna put it right underneath the propane tank and as you can see there's like not much room on the middle of that but I do not want any of the hardware or anything rubbing on the bottom of that tank for obvious reasons so I'm gonna go ahead and I have a couple uh, big u-bolts like this I'm gonna drill two holes in, hopefully if I can get them to fit the front of this and two holes in the back of this and we're gonna have the two U-bolts holding that down in the middle. All right, that actually looks like it's gonna work surprisingly well, but that one's in. I'm gonna drill two more holes for this guy here. Hopefully I can get it to fit. Okay, we got both of those U-bolts in, drilled down, mounted on that center piece of the frame there. So that's what it looks like from underneath. You just got your strap that goes across each side of the U-bolt, and then I'm gonna get a wrench, snug those two nuts down. Okay, well I just got, oops. Okay, boom! I just got both of those U-bolts fastened down and this plate is tight as crap. It is not moving anywhere. Uh, the first thing I'm seeing now when I go to fasten these tanks down is, so it comes with this rod. I don't, it's like half inch or five ace rod. It's some thick rod and it's supposed to screw into this. Well, right now you put it in there and it wiggles like this much. Dang near, that's a little exaggerated, but not much. So I'm gonna get a nut for this guy before I go too much further with this whole deal. And I'm gonna tighten this thing on there so it's nice and tight and doesn't wiggle really. And then I'm gonna get another tank as well and then I'll tighten those guys on. And then we're gonna mount the regulator on here. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna pipe that furnace in and all that good stuff. These are the two lines that I ordered off of Amazon. They have a gauge on them to let you know what your tanks are at. And they honestly seem pretty solid and they're way cheaper than anything I can find in the store, obviously. But I got two of these guys. One of these is gonna be hooked to one tank. The other one will be hooked to the other tank. 
and then they're both gonna feed into the regulator that I have and out of that is going to be one 3 8 line that comes out of the regulator and that's gonna run into the trailer for our furnace. One of these goes in this side and then the other one goes in the other side. Then as you can see, we got one line coming out of the bottom. So it'll make it pretty simple and it is an auto changeover regulator. So when one tank runs out or gets low, it'll switch to the other tank. Um, so you'll never be out of fuel until both your tanks are empty. But hopefully you don't have that problem. I'm gonna start tightening some fittings up and stuff and keep working on this gas stuff. And we'll get back to you with more information in a bit. All right, well fast forwarding uh, to the next day and kind of quite a bit of stuff done now that I didn't get, but I got another propane tank on the front and those are all hooked up, ready to go, uh, fastened down to the tongue there. And I got carpet yesterday. I got some uh, indoor outdoor carpet from Menards. And I wasn't gonna put any in here just because I'm still gonna use it as a decoy trailer and whatnot next year, but I guess I'm gonna have a decoy trailer with carpet in it now because I don't really wanna take it out because it's a lot nicer with the carpet in here. And then I built a little uh, platform for the furnace to sit on. And I think I got all my propane stuff figured out now. So I had the wrong hose and some wrong parts and I had to go to Menards again and go run and get some stuff. So like three trips later that I didn't really wanna just bore you guys with. I think I have all the right stuff. So I built this little platform here out of two by fours. So I got the platform here that's gonna go all the way back to the wall pretty much um, and probably be fastened to the wall. I do have the vents right here where I'm gonna mark out inside and uh, get my holes lined up to drill those suckers through. For the framing of the furnace, um, it didn't, this furnace does not have to have any clearance off the ground, but I just wanted to get it up off of the ground. So that's why I built this. Clearance wise, the sides of this furnace need to have at least one inch of clearance on each side and off the top from any kind of uh, combustible. But I just went like three and a half inches on each side, just so I know that I have plenty of room and just for peace of mind that I'm not gonna light anything on fire. Hopefully. The next step is going to be getting that uh, vent hole marked out. This is pretty much where I'm going to want the heater. I got it uh, just kind of roughed out here where I'm going to set this thing. Then we're going to drill through the wall and get that vent through, uh, fireproof some stuff with some caulking, some different insulation, and yeah, let's get started on this. All right, so this furnace is the NT20 SEQ. It's the 20,000 BTU Suburban furnace. For this particular install on this furnace, when I cut this vent through here, um, you can have the back of this furnace touching the wall. It says in the manual, but I'm gonna have mine just a little bit away, probably like a half inch, however far I have it mounted in the wood here. All I have to do is drill two, two and three quarter inch holes through my plywood here and through the insulation and directly out the outside of the trailer. So I'm gonna get this thing marked out now that I just moved it and have no clue where it was sitting. I have to get that back squared up and then we're gonna cut this thing out. All right, so as you can see, I uh, got my vent traced out here and measured centers and I got these marked out where I'm pretty sure it's gonna be correct. So uh, I only measured once, I only checked once and I'm gonna cut it because measure, check, once, cut, once and uh, hopefully it's right, right? Something like that, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I now have a hole in my trailer. Was that right? I don't know. But I'm gonna pull these cookies out of this thing, out of the old hole saw, and then we're gonna get the second one drilled, and then I'm gonna slide the vent through, and I'm gonna cross my fingers, and I'm gonna pray some more, and I'm gonna hope it's right. Back outside the trailer, we got our two holes here, marked out, everything turned out good, and I went ahead, this is our vent plate right here, so you have your plastic little piece for the intake, the air intake, that won't get very hot at all. And uh, then you have your exhaust, which this guy is going to be the hot part. But pretty much, this is just going to sit in here, obviously with the air intake tube on there also. And I got this squared up where I wanted it leveled up with the trailer. And I went ahead and I drilled my six holes here. Uh, so when I put the caulking on or fireproofing silicone, it is not going to be everywhere. And I'm trying to line it up like a big dumb idiot. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some uh, silicone around this. And we're going to get this thing mounted up where we want it tightened down. And then it will be back inside the trailer to finish the rest of this thing. And then a fatty down the middle. Oh yeah. 
All right. That's all good to go. I got my holes drilled that I cannot see now, so let's slap this thing on. Something doesn't look right. Oh, that's good. Okay, so pretty much, I got, I can't remember where I left off, but I got this thing mounted up to the little uh, frame I have it sitting on. I pressurized the gas lines, I tested all those for leaks, all that is good. Now I have the thermostat hooked up to the two wires for the thermostat, and I have the positive, negative uh, hooked up to the battery. And I'm gonna flip the thermostat on, and we're gonna see if everything works here. I'm gonna try to fire this thing up. So you guys are about to witness this. This has been hours and hours in the making. Actually, this is the second day, but we've got a lot of stuff done so far. And this was like the most time consuming thing that we had left. So I'm gonna try to fire this thing up, stay tuned. Let's see what happens. This is either gonna be really bad or really good. Okay, a bunch of styrofoam blew out of the fan. That's good, I guess. I see flame inside, I'll show you guys here. We got a flame in there. And it's starting to get warm already. This heater was really simple to wire up. So you have your yellow, which is the negative on this heater, your positive, which I have fused to a 7.5 amp fuse. That's what they recommend. And then you have your two wires right there that run to the 12 volt thermostat, which is a super basic setup. It's literally just the two terminals on it. And that's it. But the thing is working, the heater's working, everything went great so far. All right, well, I would say that was a success. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, honestly. I was worried about the 20,000 BTU in this trailer. It's an 8 by 16 so with the V front, it's like 18 feet total length. And I was kind of going back and forth between the 20 and the 30, and people were saying the 30,000 was a lot louder. I think the 20,000 is going to do the trick. I'm going to build a box around this and kind of clean it up with some paneling, like kind of what's on the ceiling. Well, this is my uh, second cube light that's not turning on again, so shout out to cube light. Good. Hey, that was kind of sick. Hey. So anyways, I got, I got another propane tank. I got both of those suckers mounted up front here. And then I ended up putting that nut like I was talking about on the bottom of that rod and that freaking tightened everything up way better. And then of course once I got the second propane tank and threw that guy on there and tightened it up, it all was nice and tight. But I got the regulator mounted on there, both of my lines off the tanks into the regulator. And then I got that guy running off the bottom of the regulator. I was going to run it back here and come up like straight underneath the heater back there somewhere. But I didn't really want the hose running underneath the trailer because, I mean, I'm going to have it on here when I'm hunting. So I didn't want it getting caught on corn stalks or anything like that. So I wanted to get in the trailer as soon as I could. So I decided to bring it right up into the front of the trailer. So it comes right out of the regulator up into that hole, which I'm going to silicone or grommet or do something with. And then it goes right into the trailer, as you guys saw, and right to the heater. All right, you guys. Well, I look like a crackhead, so uh, I'm gonna put this dive bomb hat on. Let me get my flashlight. Let me get my flashlight. All right, so she's looking pretty good, honestly. I fought getting this front piece cut for where the furnace grate is for the front of the furnace, but it turned out pretty good, honestly, except that, don't look at that. I have one piece left to do at the top, but that's pretty much what I ended up with. Uh, I got some toggle switches right here for if I put a couple light bars on the trailer maybe in the future or if I run a 12 volt fan in here um, or just 12 volt lights any kind of accessories I want to put on that uh, I have some toggle switches ran in there and then we got a dual USB port right there and then a 12 volt outlet right there and then just a volt meter to uh, make sure that my battery is good and charged enough to run the furnace but I'm probably gonna have an onboard charger or a trickle charger hooked to that battery Almost constantly when I am uh, out fishing and have the generator running, I will be charging the battery with a trickle charger or onboard charger. 
that thing is tucked in there pretty nice. Uh, it turned out pretty good so far. I have a couple more pieces to cut on this and then this whole thing is going to be done. All right, well, it is the next day and we are on to the next step here. So I'm gonna start drilling these holes in or uh, getting them where I want them before we drill them in here. And before we do that, I'm gonna get the couch in the back here that we're gonna put uh, in the back by the door. We need to make this thing fit. It's a little long and it's not gonna fit right now. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but we're gonna make this couch fit in here. We're gonna measure out how much room we have in here and how much we have to uh, remove from the couch with a tool of our choice. That's a lot of damage. What does it say? She should fit. Night at 93. Alright, wait, this was the first side. The other side looks way better. Oh yeah. See that? That's some stuff you'd buy at the store. Alright you guys, well I apologize for the delay, but I did not bring any other camera batteries with me yesterday and my camera batteries died after we got done modifying the couch. So I did not video uh, most of the funny stuff and good and interesting stuff that happened last night. But it is the next day. I'm back here now with new batteries. We got the couch in here right now and we got the holes drilled in the trailer floor and our hole covers in, uh, everything buttoned up and it turned out pretty nice in here. I ended up doing four holes. So we got one there, one there, and then the two in the back and that sweet custom couch in the back. For the front two, we wanted to go a little bit closer to the walls so we could hang rattle reels and kind of just have them out of the way because that's pretty much just wasted space now on the edge of those. But unfortunately, the trailer has a piece of aluminum uh, on the frame that runs all the way down right there. And obviously, I was not going to cut that out to put the holes in. So pretty much all I've left is I'm going to hang the TV in here, uh, do some little stuff like that. And I think... For the wheel wells, I'm going to build a box around them and insulate them. So I wasn't going to do it at first just because I'm kind of crunched on time here. This is the last day I have in this garage to work on the trailer. This is super thin aluminum. Like, this stuff is just thin aluminum around the wheels. And that is going to get super cold, I'm thinking. So I kind of want to build something to insulate that. But the only problem is we put the holes here. So when you sit in the couch, your feet, you know, you're comfortable like this by the holes. Uh, so now if I build a box here, I'm not going to have too much room to put my feet, but I think it would still be all right because this is going to be freaking cold. So that is going to be the next step. I'm going to run to Menards. I'm going to grab some insulation, some more paneling, and some uh, probably just one buys or pretty thin wood to build this. The boxes that I'm going to build around the wheel wells are not going to be made to sit on or hold a ton of weight, but they'll be good for holding lures, pliers, forceps, uh, water, drinks, whatever. So I'm going to go get supplies to do that. That is going to be the next thing we're going to do. All right, you guys. Well, I am back and I just got all the supplies that I'm going to need to hopefully finish this project up. Pretty much what I got going on, I bought a bunch of uh, one by three wood fairing strips, uh, just like eight foot fairing strips that I'm going to be cutting out of. And then I'm going to be running half inch formula, the pink insulation board. I just got a half inch gap on each side and I'm cutting my fairing strips like you can see here. And I'm just going to build a box about a foot and a half high over the top of this thing. And then it will kind of just be useful to... Uh, set drinks on or fishing lures or players or stuff like that. Uh, just, a, just a flat spot in the trailer and then it will also insulate the wheel well of course. But I am going to get going here, cut some more of this fairing up and uh, keep building this box and we will get back to you once we are a little bit further on this thing and let you know how it's going. All right, I've been going to town here for a little bit. Uh, this is not fastened down yet, but pretty much this is what I got for a frame. This is how it's going to sit. The insulation is pretty much just gonna lay right here on top. I got about five eighths of an inch of clearance here so the insulation is gonna lay right in here I'll have a top sheet a side sheet that will be against this here on each side um, and then obviously the two ends here and then no insulation on the inside because it'll just be the plywood and insulation to the outside obviously so I'm gonna get some insulation cut uh, we'll box this thing in and then after I get the insulation laid in there and how I want it we are gonna make sure everything fits again obviously it should and then I'm gonna start cutting the paneling for the outside and then I have all the dimensions for this one that I will just copy for that side. We'll build one for that side. 
button them all up here. I'm gonna go to town on this, cut insulation and paneling and get this thing finished up and we'll get back to you guys once this is done. All right, everyone. Well, I am not too sure where I left off last night. We started going to town and I was running pretty low on time. I had to get the trailer out of the shop last night and I did not have much time to finish everything and stuff just kind of started piling up and I was rushing. We ended up getting done at about 12 or 12.30 last night or I guess this morning. I did not have too much time to film. So I think we left off when I was building the boxes to cover the wheel wells. Um, I completed those. You guys saw the framing for those. Pretty much after that, I just threw the insulation in there, how I had it set up. I slapped some uh, pieces of insulation on there, and we covered up those wheel wells, and everything turned out really good. So everything is done in there. We got the TV hung, but I'm going to bring you guys outside, show you the finished product, and we will see you out there. So this thing, this thing turned out pretty sweet, but uh, it is missing a couple of things. Ooh, there's the first thing. Ooh. That was the first thing it was missing. Now that we got that. Ugh. All right, as we come in. All right, I got some, I got the TV going. All right, it was also missing something else here. Hang on. Gotta have the cup holders. Shout out to uh, Sam Kurtz, Oxford Mill Concepts. Perfect. All right, first of all, First of all, I ordered this uh, Pizza Hut flag and they misspelled it. So, as you see, as we come in, we got the old clam floor mat to uh, wipe the feet off. Obviously, you gotta wear socks in here. I threw the old Keurig in here. We got the toaster oven, pizza oven. Up here is pretty much just gonna be a charging station. I'm gonna throw my camera charging stuff up here, uh, whatever we need to charge. Then, we got the heater. This furnace has been ripping in here. I have been in here for probably two hours cleaning up and organizing and doing stuff. And that thing has been on like three times. And yeah, then obviously we got the TV, my uh, misspelled Pizza Hut flag. And then, what I didn't show you guys before, this is the box. So these are the boxes. I have these things right up tight against the wall and these are freaking nice. Boxes for the wheel wells, they turned out great. Everything is awesome with this trailer and I am super pumped to use it. I'm gonna sit down here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this isn't uh, my usual content. If you guys enjoy this stuff, comment down below. Let me know if you'd like to see some videos like this. Uh, I do little projects like this all the time. Let me know what you guys think down below. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys have not done that yet. And we will see you out on the ice when we are using this sucker in a couple weeks here so stay tuned for the ice fishing videos out of this thing and we will see how this thing performs when we are actually out on the lake fishing and having a good time we'll see you guys on the ice peace